Okay, now we got the unit installed. We're going to give a check out here, and I'm going to demonstrate some of the features of it. This is in a 2007 Chevy Avalanche. This will work in a lot of different applications, but this is one we'll be demonstrating in. It has a rear view camera installed and the overhead console for the rear seat entertainment. This device will actually allow the uh, auxiliary inputs from the back here to work and also the DVD player up front to operate while the car is in motion. I'll give it a quick demo. Hold on just a sec. We're going to switch the camera around to get a little better angle. Okay, now we're going to switch over to uh, the DVD. I've got a DVD in the box right now. We well, see here this is a normal screen that you see while the car is in park. I'm going to go ahead and put it in drive. And there's the uh, blue screen that uh, we're, we're trying to get rid of. I'm going to demonstrate how to get rid of this. We'll just move over to the steering wheel. We've got the, uh, the voice button on the steering wheel. We're going to push that deliberately four times within six seconds. Push back over to the screen. What we've done now is enabled the DVD to play. It'll operate now while the car is driving along. It'll continue operating until we push any of the other buttons to switch off of it. Or, once again, I can press the button on the steering wheel four times and it will switch back off to the, the normal blue screen. I'll go ahead and demonstrate that. So you can see you have full control over turning it on and turning it back off again. As such. Like I said, this will also work if you have the aux input. If you've got a video iPod or something, you want to plug it into the back and you want to view it up on the front screen, this will allow you to do that. Same way as we're doing with the DVD player, just pressing the buttons on the steering wheel. It's a great accessory. I know you're going to love it. Well, this is Dave from Coastal Electronics. I'm going to demonstrate the installation of the GM Lockpick. This is the device that's going to turn on your screen and allow it to operate when it's in motion. This will work for the DVD player and also for the aux in jacks in the back. It's a small box, it's got a T-harness that plugs in the back of the radio, very simple, just unplug one connector, plug in another one, you're ready to go. The goal is, when we're all finished, is we're going to take this screen right here you see in the front, the one we want to get rid of that says you can't do it, and we're going to unlock it and make it work. It's a must-have accessory for these 2007 cars, you're going to really like it. Okay, let's begin by showing the radio they're going to be working with. This style radio is the one that this piece is, is designed to operate with. It will unlock it and allow this thing to operate with uh, audio and video on the front screen. I'm going to demonstrate the installation of this piece. Uh, it's pretty much the same on a lot of these vehicles. You're going to take the trim off around the outside edge of the radio here. It just pops off from the back side very carefully. You pop it loose, exposes the screws behind it, take the screws loose, then we're going to uh, plug the plug in the back of the radio. We'll go through these steps here step by step in just a moment. Okay, with a flat blade screwdriver or one of the panel removal tools, you're going to pop this front panel loose. We've already got it loose for you here to show you what we're going to do. On the side here, you can see the... Uh, the screws that need to be removed, it's pretty self-explanatory as you look at it. Just take the screws off around this edge and around the other edge, and that will uh, allow us to pull the radio out. Okay, with all the screws removed now, we're going to uh, disassemble it. It's pretty simple. It's only a three-piece puzzle, so you're just going to take the bottom piece off first, then the middle, and then the radio itself can pull out to expose the connectors in the back. Okay, now the radio has been pulled loose. We're going to look at the back of the radio, bottom right-hand corner. You have a connector. This is the one we're going to remove as such and plug in the T-harness. So in other words, our connector from our harness is going to plug in here, and then the connector we just took loose plugs into the other side of it. Okay, this is a quick look at the uh, final connections. Just going to plug into the interface itself, and then there's your T-harness exposed in the back here. We just plugged in one side, and then the other side plugs into the radio. Simple. Okay, now that the radio is back into position, we're going to go ahead and mount the box. Cable's stuck in behind the radio, and the box is going to slide back under the radio in this position like such. And then we'll reassemble the panels on the bottom here, doing the same order again with the middle one first and then the, the bottom plate. 